so glad to see you this Sunday morning, Palm Sunday. And this song is saying, I receive your love. So many people, I mean, today, and there's so many people that are becoming like atheists and agnostics. And I say become because you're not born a non-believer. You're born a believer. And that's why, that's why Jesus said to come to him, you got to come like a child. And if you come like a child, then you can receive what he has for you. Some of us have too many mental blocks to receive anything from God. And what God wants to give you, and I, and I talk to sometimes, uh, I talk to atheists or agnostics, and, and they're saying, give me proof. Well, we know creation's proof. But I go further than that. It's, I've never, like, experienced God, and I always tell them, yes, you have. And they, well, what do you mean by that? No, I haven't. I go, yes, you have. And they, no, I haven't. Yes, you have. No. <laughs> because if you've ever experienced even a touch of love, you've experienced God. Because God is love. When, and if you're here for the first time and you came across any, like, real judgmental, critical, abrasive Christians. I want to tell you this. I apologize for them because they're misrepresenting God. Because God is love. And it's crazy how a moment like this, just you sitting in this room can change your life if you're ready to receive his love. But his love also comes through conversations or words or teachings we are a byproduct of the words we absorb the people we hang out around with the books that we read and all of that is words is conversations there was an old saying and you've heard it sticks and stones may break my bones but words or names will never hurt me how many know that's a lie because some of us in this room, you need healing today because of words someone spoke over you and you're struggling still. Maybe it was your wife or your ex-wife or your husband or your dad or your mom or your teacher or somebody told you something and you never recovered. But I have good news for you. There's a God that loves you and he wants to change your life today if you're just open. Some will say be open. To receive what? Love to receive freedom, to receive breakthrough today. Today, your life can change if you just, just get in this moment and receive what God has for you. We're not here to offer you religion. We're here to offer you wholeness, peace, freedom, eternal life. Everything that you're looking for, you can't find it in a drug. You can't find it in your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Even if your husband changes, it's not going to change you. There's only one person that can make your heart complete, set you free, fulfill you, and his name is Jesus Christ. And whoever calls on that name will be saved, will be made whole, will be restored. Does anybody need some restoration? Come on. You used to have joy, but you lost it. You used to have peace, but it's no long, you no longer have it. Today could be that day of restoration for you. Just open yourself up to receive his love. And we're all looking for it. There was an old song, country song. And he said, he said, it said this, looking for love in all the wrong places. I remember that. Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> and you know what? The truth is, every one of us is looking for love. And maybe today is your last stop. You tried everywhere else. And God says, I love you. How about me? Today could be your day. Come on. It's time to let go of the depression, the suicide, the fear, the doubt, the rejection, the abuse, and start over. Give Jesus a praise because he's the only one that can save a soul. He's the only one that can make you whole. He's the only name to call on to be saved and have eternal life. I'm glad every one of you are here. Now, Pastor Robert is going to be speaking, and I'm going to welcome him in just a second. And it's going to be awesome. But I, I just want us to remember this week, it, they call this Passion Week. 
and it describes the week of Jesus dying, suffering, walking into Jerusalem, and then resurrecting from the dead. We call this also a holy week. We got to be careful that we don't treat this as a church like it's something ordinary. I don't want to be religious, but I want to make sure that we're in the moment and we're aware that this is a holy time. I want, I want us to be passionate about it, like pas God's passionate about you. And when you're passionate about something, you go the extra mile. I'll say it again. When you're passionate about something, you go the, you go the extra mile. Let's be passionate about the Lord and let's do extra worship in this season. We're going to have opportunities all week long. So let's worship passionately. This Wednesday, we're going to have service this week. Friday, we have our, our Good Friday service. At 6 o'clock, we're going to open the doors and we're going to have something called the Passion Experience. We're going to have live dramas in the foyers. They're going to have food that they served in the Passover. From 6 to 7 o'clock, it's going to be like you're in Jerusalem out there in the streets, out there in the hallways. And then we're going to have a, a, our service. We're just going to worship God and thank the Lord for dying on the cross, suffering, resurrection from the dead for our sins so we can be forgiven and have eternal life. Come on. How many know that's a big deal? It's a big deal. So, so we have that on Friday. Sunday, Sunday morning, we're going to start off really early at 6 o'clock in the morning. This is, this is our sunrise service. You do not want to miss this service. We start off the service outside in the dark. And then as we're worshiping, as we're praying, and as we're singing, and as we're hearing the word, the sun comes up. We're going to remind ourselves of that day when Jesus resurrected from the dead. Are there any passionate worshipers that can wake up a little early and worship? I, I, I guarantee you this, it's the most refreshing service you'll ever be at. That's our, that's our sunrise service. Then we're going to have our service at 9 and 11. And 9-11 and, and one thirty Spanish, one thirty Spanish. And by the way, I'm going to be speaking, preaching, and teaching in Spanish today, Spanish service. If you want to hear a person that talks, a person that talks okay Spanish, but he's trying his best, come see me at one thirty. And um, so, we're, so we're going to have all those services. Then I want you to be passionate about your inviting others. There's an opportunity of a lifetime. People come if they're invited. Pastor Robert's going to talk about passionately inviting people. And the third thing, let's bring an offering, a resurrection offering on this, this, um, this Easter. Because this is what we're doing. We want to build a school in Kenya. In Kakamega, Kenya. It's going to be the first Christian school in the area. All the other schools are Muslim schools. But this is going to be the first Christian school. And it's going to be for our little orphans that we've adopted. They're going to be the first students. And we're going to hire professional teachers. But this is what we're going to do. we got to build, physically build the building. And what's so great about it, it only costs us like $60,000 to build a school for our little boys and little girls. And open it up to our community. How many believe that's a great idea? And also... One more thing, we're going to be launching a church in Arizona. We're taking a campus over in Arizona. It's a beautiful campus, and we want to be debt-free when we enter that building. We want to pay it off. We don't want to, we're going to send one of our pastors here. He's moving his whole family to Arizona. He we, we just visited a couple weeks, and I told him, what do you think? He goes, I'll go. I go, is God calling? He goes, yep, he is. I go, well, let's do this. But we want to send him to service the community, not service debt. How many believe we could set this up properly and pay off, pay off that whole campus? It's, it's $791,000, but we could pay it off if all of us do our best, get that done, and launch a church, resurrect a church, and, and also resurrect a brand new school that's never been there in Kakamega, Kenya. How many believe we could do both of them? I need your help. So I want you to invite your friends and relatives. I promise you I'm going to have a great word for them on Sunday. It's going to be a word that will, I really be, believe, touch their hearts and let them know that there's hope. And their hope is in Jesus Christ because he has resurrected from the dead. We serve a God that's alive. And since he's alive, he can make a real change in your life today. How many believe that? Let's get Pastor Robert a 
Way we're allowed to reach. Welcome. Come on. Come on. Let's give Jesus a shout of praise this morning, this afternoon. Come on. We can do better than that. Give Jesus a shout of glory. Exalt his name. The King of kings and Lord of lords. Raise your hands to the Lord if you can and say, Lord, speak to me today. Change me today. Set me on fire today. Set my family on fire today. Touch me today, God, so I can never be the same ever again. Use me this week to share the gospel. Use me this week to invite everyone I know to next weekend services, God. Here I am. Send me in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. Give your neighbor a high five. Look at your neighbor and tell them, good to see you today. Those online, can we wave to everybody online? We've got a lot of people watching online. And welcome to our Palm Sunday celebration service. I'm so excited to be with you guys in your home, maybe at your workplace, at the hospital. You're on vacation. Good to see you today. Um, I can't see you, but good to see you online. Thank you. But it's so good to see everybody. How many is excited to be in God's house today? Isn't this good? You guys, how many got one of these cards? How many got one? I'm going to call it this. How many got the evangelism invite bundle package? Raise your hand if you got this on the way in today. Evangelism bundle package. Raise your hand if you got one of these on the way in. All right, hands down. How many did not get one of these on the way in? All right, a lot of you guys. On the way out, grab one of these evangelism invite bundle packet. The ones that have it right now, I want you to do something really quick. Because at the end of service, we're going to pray. Even if you didn't get one of these packets, I want you to... Take some moment throughout this service. I want you to write down five people that you want to see get saved this next week for Easter. Even if you don't have one of these, I want you to start writing these down. At the end, I'm going to pray for this. I'm going to pray for these names. How many have friends and family right now, coworkers, neighbors, they're not saved, they're going to hell? Raise your hands. Say, so, Pastor, going to hell? Yes, without Jesus, we go to hell. With Jesus, we go to heaven. When we put our faith in God, our name is written in the Lamb's book of life. When we are not saved, we don't know Jesus, we're headed to destruction, we're headed towards hell. And I want you to write these names down because I believe this weekend somebody's daughter is going to get saved this week. Somebody's son is going to get saved, a husband's going to get saved, a wife's going to get saved. Give Jesus a big shout if you believe that. How many have a kid right now, they're not saved? A young adult, you have a, you have a child, they're not saved. Raise your hand. If you have a child, you have a young adult, they're, they're 18, 19, 15, you got a child that's not saved, put your hand up right now. Father, we declare our children will serve God right now. Begin to pray, church. This is serious business right now. Lord, all these hands that are raised. You got mamas that cry at night, God. You see their cries. All they want to do is see their son and their daughters saved. Touched him, God. Yeah, I just, I just seen a picture of a mom crying and crying. You've been crying for your son or for your daughter. You've been crying at night. You can't even sleep. You've been asking them to come to church. They haven't come. They won't come. They said, no, mama, quit bothering me. I, I don't believe in that. I'm an atheist. I don't believe. I don't believe in that. How many by a show of hands, your kids have told you they're atheists? Raise your hand. Raise your hand if your kids have told you they're atheists. There it goes, right there. God's touching you right there, man. God's touching you right there. He's touching your kids right now. There's another one right here. There it goes. Another one right here. Your, your son or your daughter is saying they're an atheist. We bind those lies off your kid in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Begin to pray in the spirit, church. Begin to pray. We got two mamas. Might have more. Their kids are saying they're atheists. Got another one right here. We bind those lies. Got another one in the back. We bind the spirit of atheism. We, we, we command those blinders to come off, those scales to come off which we'll talk about later. We give you glory, God. They're going to say yes to you. There's another mama right there. They, we're gonna, they're going to say yes to you. There's another mama right there. They're going to say yes to you, Jesus. This week they're going to get an invitation. This week they're going to say yes. Maybe they live out of state. But, Father, they will go to church where they live in Texas, Arizona. Wherever they live, they're going to get saved. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. You could do better than that. Give Jesus a shout of praise. Someone... Someone's mama's getting saved. Someone's kid is getting saved this week. Whew. I just seen a mom crying and crying and crying. 
That crying's going to stop, says the Lord. That crying is going to stop, says the Lord. It says the Spirit of the Lord, that crying's going to stop. Your kid's getting saved. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I want you to write down this title. God's Rescue Mission. That's what Easter is all about. To rescue those that are lost. I don't know about you. I've been lost before. Anybody been lost? How many been addicted to drugs? Lost. Partying, just lost. Going club after club, lost. Sleeping with everybody you can sleep with, lost. Hurting, broken. God is on a mission to rescue us. This mission doesn't stop. This mission doesn't sleep. How many has gotten awake in the morning and God just told you to pray for somebody? I was lost. I'm going to take you back. I was probably about 20, 22, 23. I was lost. I was raised in church, but I was lost. Just because you go to church doesn't make you a Christian. Just because you're in the garage will make you a car. All right. I'd go to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, but I was lost. I was lost. I needed Jesus to rescue me. And I never forget, I was on my way to work one day. I worked at Marino Valley GMC. I was selling cars. Just graduated, just graduated college. I was selling cars. I was lost. Trying to hook up with this girl, that girl. I was lost, broken. And I remember going to work that morning, and I felt something on my car. Like somebody was trying to get in when I was driving. And that time I had a Yukon, never forget it, red Yukon. I pulled that thing over. I said, God, I don't know what's happening to me right now. And I felt somebody trying to get in my car. And I was pulled over. Mama called me from Florida. But she passed away a few years ago. And she goes, Robert, where are you? Where are you? I said, Mama, I'm pulled, I'm pulled over. There, there's something after me. She said, yeah, I just got a vision. There's demons that are trying to kill you right now. Pull that car over. Don't drive. You need Jesus right now. Repent of your sins, Robert. Enemies trying to kill you. It wasn't two weeks before that. I was driving on Arrow Boulevard in Fontana. Arrow and Sierra. Bank of America. Pastrami joint on the left. That's right. I know my food places. Pastrami place. No. Pastrami on the right. Bank of America on the left. I'm on Arrow. Anybody know Fontana? How many ate at that pastrami place? Is it still there? Let's go this week. These pastrami sandwiches. I'm on Arrow Boulevard, Bank of America, pastrami place on the right. I get to the light. I fall asleep. It's two weeks before those demons are trying to get in my car and kill me. I fall asleep. I wake up. I don't know where I'm at. My truck, little GMC Sonoma pickup truck. Had some landscape and stuff in the back. I was a landscaper. I used to cut grass to make a living and pay through college, whatever. <laughs> landscape, lawnmower in the back, weed whacker. My little trailer that I had. My car's in park now. I don't have a clue where I'm at. I was lost. I needed Jesus to rescue me. I said, where am I? I remember that, that intersection, Sierra. That's all I remember. I get out of my truck as a truck driver. I says, sir, where are we? He goes, what do you mean where are we? Are you on drugs? What's wrong with you? Where are you? I said, where am I? This does not look like Fontana. He goes, Fontana, you're in Redlands. I said, come again, I'm in Redlands. You got to be out your mind. Are you serious? He's here in Redlands. I said, what freeway? Where's the 10? He goes, this way, the 210, the 10. He goes, man, what's, you're on some good dope. I said, not on dope, dope, sir. I'm running from God. Several times, those three weeks, four weeks, I fell asleep on the freeway, wrecked my truck. The devil was, I needed a rescue. I don't know where you're at today. Maybe you're lost. You're broken. I got good news. This is a celebration of Easter. God is on a mission to rescue you. Look at your neighbor and tell them, get ready. You're going to get rescued. Look at the person behind you. Get ready. You're about to get rescued. Not only you, but your kid is going to get rescued this week. 
Your crazy neighbor is going to get rescued this week. Your crazy husband is getting rescued this week. Your out of your mind wife is getting rescued this week. Some of you guys, you will be divorced if God doesn't intervene. You need a rescue. Your wife's not serving God. Husband is not serving God. If Jesus doesn't intervene, you will be in divorce court. But we're here to cancel every assignment of the devil. For Jesus, this is the reason why he was manifested. He was manifested to destroy the works of the devil. I don't know where you're at today. Luke 19. This scripture of Palm Sunday, a lot of mixed emotions here. A lot of mixed emotions on this Palm Sunday. Look at this Luke 19. Look at the emotions going back and forth. Luke 19, 36. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. And the Gospel of Matthew talks about the, the palm branches. That's where we get the palm trees, the branches you've seen today with the kids. When he reached a place where the world started down the Mount of Olives, all of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. How many have seen great miracles in your life because of Jesus? How, how many have seen the miraculous hand of, of God? How many have seen the miraculous hand of God? Give Jesus a praise break for five seconds. <laughs> Woo. Man, we've seen the miraculous hand of God. People were going nuts. They were worshiping him right on the streets. Blessings on the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This verse 38, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Man, they were worshiping and hollering. They had a worship service right in the middle of the street. But now go down to verse 41. These next few scriptures now show the mission of God. It shows Jesus' heart for the lost. It shows Jesus' heart for the broken. Verse 41. So everybody's hollering. They're worshiping God. They're, the, the king is here. Now, of course, the Jewish people, they had it all mixed up. They thought he was there to take over the Roman Empire, to take over again. Because at this moment, the Roman Empire had the, the people of Jerusalem in oppression. Look at verse 41. Jesus now is walking. And as he came closer to Jerusalem, this is verse 41. Look at the mixed emotions here. But as he came closer to Jerusalem... He saw the city ahead. He's seen him. And he began to weep. So in the middle of this procession, Jesus is right in the middle of the procession. It's like a parade going on. Jesus starts to cry like a little baby. He starts to weep. This word weep could translate into he was in deep anguish and pain for the people of Jerusalem. So in the middle of this procession, Jesus starts crying. He starts weeping and wailing. That was a time of celebration. It is, it was. But he's seen the condition of the people and they were lost. Some of the people were still not getting it. How I many of you could be you could be so close, but yet so far? So close in a room like this. So close to a believer. So close to a leader, but yet so far. Jesus says, How I wish today. That all of you people would understand the way to peace. Jesus was telling them, I'm peace. Everything you want is found in me. But now it is too late. And peace is hidden from your eyes. This is the same portion of scripture, same Palm Sunday. Before long your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you on every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. Don't miss God this afternoon. Let's not allow our family to miss God this Easter celebration week. Let's not allow our boss to miss what this is all about. Somebody posted on social media, silly rabbit, Easter is for Jesus Christ. Hey, it's fun. Egg hunting, man, that's fun. But don't miss the real meaning behind everything that's going on this week. 
Look at your neighbor. Don't miss it. Open up your ears. Open up your eyes. Don't miss it. Jesus began to prophesy the future judgment on Jerusalem. Why was Jesus crying? Write this down. Why was Jesus weeping and crying? Number one, the people missed the peace that was right in front of them. They missed the peace that was right in front of them. They missed the Savior that was right in front of them. They were missing it. Number two, why was Jesus weeping? The people would face a future judgment. The people of Jerusalem didn't know that a Roman general by the name of Titus, it's called the Great Siege of 70 A.D., you thought Hitler was the first holocaust. That was not the first holocaust against the Jews. The great siege of 70 AD was the first holocaust ever recorded. He came in and killed thousands and thousands of Jews. Jesus seen the future. That's why he was crying. When is the last time you cried for a soul? When is the last time you couldn't sleep because you were thinking of your neighbor? If they die, they're going to hell. We need to weep like Jesus wept. We need to lose sleep. We need to lose sleep over souls. Friends and family, Jesus Christ is coming soon. When you see wars and rumors of wars, watch out for my return, says the Lord. When you hear peace, peace, watch out for my return, says the Lord. I'm coming soon, says the Lord of hosts. Inflation, rising, this is the end times. Wars and rumors of wars, this is the end times. Jesus is coming soon. See, somebody without Jesus, we should be crying over their eternal punishment. If they die, where are they going? My son dies today. Where is he going? So my mama dies today. Where is she going? My grandpa dies today. Where is he going? Veronica has a great grandfather still alive. By the grace of God, he's broken all of his hips and had every surgery you can mention on his hips. I think he's 98 or 101, something like that. He's just they they just they just quit they just quit counting. Because back in those days, they didn't really have a birth certificate. They, where, I don't know where it's birth. I don't know how old he is. He's about 98, 99, maybe 100. <laughs> so I remember going to his big party right before he got really sick. Man, they had a mariachi band. Oh, my goodness. They had a party out of this world. Veronica's family didn't know how to party. Taco man, taco lady was there. Enchilada lady was there. The salsa, everything was there. Music hits and they're just dancing. Eighty percent of them got drunk. Just having fun, right? I keep on looking at Grandpa though in this party. Is he saved? They're having this big old party. I was asking my wife, is he saved? This is an awesome party. But this guy at his age, let's be honest, he could die any second. I mean, you passed 90, right? Anybody, anybody past 90? I don't want to scare them. I'm sorry. But come on, let's get real. You're not going to live to 150. There's no such thing. You won't even live 145. There's no such thing. You won't even live it to 130. There's no such thing. So in this party, I gotta wake my I gotta wait. I'm on a rescue mission. I'm an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven. I'm on a rescue mission. Mariachi is great, but grandpa needs Jesus. Made my way to grandpa. I said, Grandpa. Do you know Jesus? He goes, yeah, yeah. 
That's how you know Jesus. Yo fue a la iglesia. I used to go to church all the time. As a grandpa, that's good. Pero la iglesia, church doesn't get you saved. I said, are you born again? He said, what in God's name is that? I said, grandpa's not saved. He has religion. He doesn't have relationship. He has religion. He doesn't know Jesus. And right there in 96, 97, grandpa gave his life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus is on a mission. I want you to write these down for the sake of time. So again, we're talking about God's rescue mission. Here's number one, how you and I could get involved in rescuing the lost. Three ways to help rescue the lost. Number one, Pastor Marco mentioned it. I'm going to reemphasize it. Number one, invite and bring them to church. Invite who? Invite the lost. Bring who? Bring the lost. Bring those that are hurting. Bring those that are strung out on drugs. Bring them here. They're going to get saved this weekend. How do we get involved in the lost? We invite them. Our responsibility is to invite the lost to church so God's house may be filled. And for the lost to hear about Jesus. The Bible gives a description in Matthew 22 about a, about a marriage feast. And the king tells his servants, hey, my son's getting married. Invite everybody. Matthew 22, go down to verse 8. And he said to his servants, the wedding feast is ready. And the guests I invite are worthy of my honor. Verse 9, go out to the street corners. Go out on Baseline. Go out on Highland. Go out on Foothill. Invite everyone you see. Who should we invite this week? Who? People at Stater Brothers. People at Baker's. Where are you going to lunch today? Anybody have lunch plans today? Where are you going to? Are you going to pastrami, Fontana? Okay, take me. I hear that. I got a pastrami rage. I know. I got pastrami vibes in this place right now. How many going down to In-N-Out? Anybody going to In-N-Out today? Barbecue place, Famous Dave's, okay. On the way out today, if you haven't got one, you're going to get the invite evangelistic bundle packet. That's a new name I came up with for 9 o'clock service. This is your invite evangelism bundle packet. Has door hangers on here. Now, some of you guys know, some of you guys don't know. We made how many of these? 15, 20,000 or something? It costs thousands and thousands of dollars to make these. Oh, pastor does? Yeah. I mean, you can't even get gas now. I can't even get, I mean, it's crazy now. Right? Pastor, why you spend all that money? Because your daughter, your son, your co-worker, your neighbor is worth more than money can buy. Jesus paid the price on Calvary. There's no, there's no money tag on that. This could go in one ear or out the other. But I know I'm not talking to a crowd like that. You, I'm talking to a crowd of doers. You know how I know that? It's 1220 and this place is packed out. Give yourselves a round of applause. We even got extra folks sitting in the back. We added extra chairs in the back. We got crazy people that love Jesus in this place. So you can get 10 of these if you want. If you're a radical, crazy Christian and you're saying, Pastor, 10, that's crazy. I could do 20 of these. Pastor, you crazy. I could do 30 of those. I want you to grab these. We're going to invite. We have a card. There's flyers. There's a little business card. You can just go crazy with this one. You're at McDonald's this week? Whew, to the drive through Here you go. <laughs> this is too big. This will smack him in the face in the drive through <laughs> Unless you fold it all up and crumble it. This is, the, this is something nice. Put this on your refrigerator. This one, I could just go crazy with it. I could keep 50 in my pocket, and I could just go, hey, I'd like to invite you for Easter. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. And I, so we have cards. We got business cards. How many wrote down some names really fast? How many wrote down some names? Put these up. I want to pray for these people for a minute. I'll give you just two more scriptures or one more. We're done. Put this up for a second. Some of you guys put names down, or maybe you don't have this card. Put it on a paper or something. But on the way out, grab these. 
Father, you see the names that are here, God. I said I would pray for these cards, 11 o'clock, God. And, Lord, you touch these people that are on this card. I don't know who they are, God. Touch them. Holy Spirit, you're the one that brings conviction upon the non-believers. Holy Spirit, bring conviction. Then when our family, our friends say, hey, would you come to Easter with me? They're going to say yes. We proclaim Friday, Sunday all day, all of our campuses. We're going to say it right now, God. We proclaim thousands of yeses in the next seven days. The next six days, we proclaim thousands of yeses. Yes, I'll come with you. Yes, I'll go Sunday. Yes, I'll go Friday. Yes, I'll go to sunrise. Give Jesus a clap offering if you believe this. We believe it, God. How do we get involved in this rescue plan? Number one, invite to bring the church. Number two, tell them about the good news. Tell somebody. Tell somebody that Jesus came to save. Tell them that Jesus came to heal. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through Jesus, might be saved. That word saved is sozo. The Greek word sozo. It means to rescue. There it goes. There's God's rescue mission. There it goes. That word sozo means, that's the first definition. It means to rescue one from danger, from destruction, from death. To protect, to keep alive, preserve, preserve life. Deliver, heal, be made whole. Tell somebody the good news this week. Just really quick, I was, I had a guy come to my house a few days ago and he delivered a bed. And um, I said, okay, I'll let him set up the bed, I'll let him do his thing. But before he gets on that truck, he's going to get prayer. Okay? Nobody coming to my house doing any kind of work until they hear the gospel or they get prayer before they leave. Why? I'm on a, I'm on a rescue mission. He comes to my house. He sets it up. Great job. He's about to hop on the truck. And I was going to let him go. And God says, no, you told me to go, go pray for him. I said, okay, God, let's do it. He's going to hop on the truck. I said, hey, sir, um, I want to pray for you. I said, just bow your head. I'm going to pray for you right now. I didn't ask him, hey, sir, would you like prayer today? I, I, I have time for that. He was about to jump on the truck. There's sometimes I got time for that. I don't, we don't got time. Let me just pray. And I don't want to get into a bunch of objections. Well, I don't know. What kind of religion are you? I'm not sure you're going to pray for me. I don't know. I don't want to get, I, I don't want to get into that. I said, sir, just bow your head. I'm going to pray for you. He goes, go ahead. I said, yeah, I am going to pray for you. I said, Lord, I'll never forget this prayer because I haven't done this in a long time. I said, Lord, without you, we're addicted. Lord, without you, we're bound. Lord, without you, we can't hold down relationships. Lord, without you, can't be healed. So I went into these series of things without God, without God. I, never, I had never prayed for that in a long time. So I get up, he goes, we, we, we get up praying, he goes, How'd you know? Did I touch on one of them, sir? Did God touch? He goes, yeah. I said, which one? He goes, almost all of them. I got one that's really messed, that's messed me up. I said, which one is it? He said, I got a problem with drugs. I said, yeah. Without Jesus, you will be bound. You might end up dead the next few weeks if we don't, if you didn't come to my house. So you might have overdosed. Because the devil's after your soul. He wants to kill, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy your life. This job you got, you might be fired next week. You need to be delivered of drugs. And right there, we said another prayer for him to receive Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And right there in the sidewalk, he gave his life to Jesus. I'm on a mission. How many are on this rescue mission with God? How many are on this rescue mission like Jesus? Number three, write this down. How do we get involved in this rescue plan with God? Number three. Pray for their eyes to open. This is a spiritual prayer that we could bind spiritual blindness. I look at, I look at scripture. I don't look at them as metaphors. I read them literally. 
Anybody like me read them literally? Heaven is not a metaphor. It's real. Heaven is not a metaphor. Hell is not a metaphor. It's real. It's more real than me and you sitting here. It was created thousands and thousands of years ago. People have blinders on. Spiritual blind. Like me, I was lost. I was blind. I was I, I got so blind I was dumb. Anybody get so blind you start doing stupid things? I mean, I don't got time to go into it. Pray for their eyes to open. See, Satan has blinded people from the truth. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Satan, who is the God of this world. How many, you see it there, it's lowercase g. Uppercase g, there's only one God. His name is Jesus Christ. When I read scriptures like that, i got to clarify. Oh, God. No, now look at it, lowercase. He's lower, but he is the God of this world, Satan. He controls the systems in our world. Satan, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They, oh, they do not understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is exact, who is the exact likeness of God. Isaiah 42, 6 and 7. I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you. I will give you to my people of Israel. I'll give you to the people of San Bernardino. I'll give you to your job site. I'll give you the people in your neighborhood as a symbol of my covenant with them. And you will be a light to guide the nations. You will be a light to guide your job site. You will be a light to, to guide your boss. You will be a light to guard your friends. You will be a light to guard your family, to guide your, to guide your family. Verse 7, you will open up the eyes of the blind. You will free the captives of prison, from prison, releasing those who sit in dark dungeons. This week, today, right now, some of you guys, as I'm preaching, as the Holy Spirit is ministering, the whole day, the kids singing, our worship team, the whole time we've been worshiping here, there's been spiritual blindness coming off of your scales. How do I know that? The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The Holy Spirit is here. As soon as we get in an atmosphere like this and you give your attention to the king, you give your attention to God today, you designate a time to be here, you skipped out on the movies this morning, you skipped out on the beach this morning, you decided to come to the house of God. Somebody invited you and God's saying, I got you right where I want you. And today... Spiritual blindness and scales are coming off. But it's not only us in this room. You got family, you got friends, you got coworkers. Those blinders need to come off. Not only are you going to ask them to come, you're going to pray for the blinders to come off this week. So if you got a son that's blinded, you're going to say this, Jesus, I command those blinders to come off his eyes and off his mind. Satan, you have confused my son, but this is the last week you're going to confuse my son. Jesus came to die on the cross to set the captives free, to open up the eyes of the blind. My son's blind scales, those scales are starting to come off. He will see or she will see the truth of who Jesus is. How many believe that today? So grab this packet on the way out. We're going to end here in a few minutes. I'm going to ask that nobody leave. When you leave, sometimes this causes a lot of distraction. If you're a worker, you're a volunteer, yeah, you got to move. If you're a doctor, you're a surgeon, you got surgery, go, 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 go. <laughs> Get out of here, run. I don't know if we have any surgeons right now. They're going to do surgery at 1 o'clock. You'd have been gone already. So There's no way we have a surgeon in the house. You got, you got surgery at 1. There's no such thing as that. You'd be gone already. So I know I'm talking to people that maybe got to go to work after. Going out to Denny's or just your day off, okay? These two minutes, every time we get to this moment, Christians, you need to be praying. Praying, God. Pastor Robert's going to go fishing right now for souls. Pastor Robert's about to go fishing for souls, God. Holy Spirit, convict. Holy Spirit, convict. Christians begin to pray. 
Holy Spirit, begin to convict the non-believers that are here, that are watching us online. You're not right with God. This is your day. Yeah. It's a holy moment. Now with everybody's attention now up here, Christians, yeah, you're praying, you're in the spirit. For the rest of you guys, look, look at me for a second. Let's make sure that you're on your way to heaven. Pastor, what are you talking about? I thought everybody just go to heaven. That's not the case. That's not how the Bible plays it out. That's not how it's described. That's not the truth. There's a real heaven and there's a real hell. Well, Pastor, who goes to hell? Number one reason for hell was this, for Lucifer and the fallen angels. Hell, in its original intent, was not for human beings. It was for Lucifer and all the fallen angels. Do you know what was created for me and you? Heaven was created for me and you. So when a human being ends up in hell, they're 120, 200%, they're trespassing. Heaven has been created for you. So here it goes. You're saying, Pastor, I want to go to heaven. That's me. Maybe you're in this room, you're saying, Pastor, I need to be forgiven of all my sins. And I'm walking around with all this shame and all this guilt and all this stuff. I'm done. I need to surrender to God today. Maybe there's another group. You've been backslidden. You've been running from God. It's your first time in church in a long time. And God is saying, son, and I'm so proud of you. Let's rededicate your life today. And as some of you guys, you've never done that. This is new to you. You're saying, man, I, I've never been in an atmosphere like this. I don't know what's going on. This is God. God loves you. His whole point of Easter, he came and he died on the cross. So you could be forgiven. So you could go to heaven. So you can have a relationship with God. So when you die today, you go straight to heaven. So I want everybody to stand up. And I'm going to ask this last question. If you were to die today, where will you spend eternity? Are you saved or born again? Have you repented of your sins and given your life to Jesus? Backslidden, you need to come back to God today and just rededicate your life, your body, your mind. So here it goes. Saying, Pastor, if I die today, I don't know where I'm going. I'm not right with God. I haven't given my life to Jesus yet. Or, Pastor, I need to rededicate. I've been running, I've been doing things, I know that's not right. I just want a fresh start today. I just want to hit the, 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 re, the redo button, the start over button. I just want to start over. I've been drinking. I've been doing this. I, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I can't run any longer. I can't sleep at night. I have no peace. I have no joy. I need a, I need a change today. If you need a change today, if you want to make sure you're going to heaven when you die, if you die today, if you need to rededicate your life, I'm going to count to three. All across this auditorium, those watching online. As soon as I say that number three, you go, Shoo, that's me. I need a change. I need a new start. I need God to forgive me of my sins. I'm not right with God. I'm coming back to God today. I'm rededicating my life to him. That's me, Pastor. When I count to three all across this auditorium, Watching online, raise your hands if you want Jesus, if you want to be forgiven, if you want to get right with God. Raise your hands when I say three. One. Don't let nothing hold you down. I'm on one. You're saying, I wait till three right now. I love it. No, keep your hand up. I love it. I ain't wait till three right now. I want God. I love it. You know what's going to happen right now? God's going to use you as a flood. Because some people right now, they're thinking, should I do it or shouldn't I do it? So right now, even your obedience to go like that, when I said one, it's going to cause a flood of people to get saved right now. If you want Jesus, want to be forgiven, want to get right, you want to come back to God, count to three, raise your hands. One, two, three, raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them, raise them. See hands there, see hands there, see hands there. Raise them, raise them. I want God. I need change. I need to be rescued. I'm in danger mode. I need rescue. I need rescue today. 
I need God to rescue me. All those hands that were just raised, I want you to come to the front. We're going to lead you in a prayer of salvation. We're going to lead you in a prayer to be rescued by God Almighty. Even if you didn't raise your hand, run to the front. Come, 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 come. Don't let nothing hold you. Come. Your heart is beating fast. Run, run. Your palms are sweating. Come. God is knocking at your heart. I need to get right with God. Come. I need to make peace with God. Come before it's too late. Today is a day of salvation. Come before it's too late. Come. This is your day. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. I need God for you to rescue me. I can't do it no more, God. I need you to rescue me. I can't do it anymore. I can't do it, God. Squeeze in, squeeze in, squeeze in. We need a whole bunch of leaders up here. We have at least 40, 50 people that's being unattended right now. Leaders, discipleship group leaders all over here. Leaders, come on down. We need you. We need some help. Just for a few minutes, you guys. Are you guys coming down for salvation? Coming down? Yeah, come on down. People are still coming, you guys. Come, come, come. Thank you, leaders. Make sure everybody's covered on this side. Are we covered here? I might have a few more here. And then we got one, two. We got three people here in the front. They're still not covered. We got some ladies here. Still not covered. Three ladies in the front. They need some coverage. We got one over here. All right. I want everybody to look up here. We're going to lead you in a prayer right now. You say this prayer, you're saved. That easy? Yeah, that easy. Because Jesus paid the price for our sin. He paid the penalty. The price has already been paid. All we got to do is accept him. That's it. Put our faith. We're going to confess him as Lord. That's it. He already paid the price. He did it on Calvary. When you say this prayer, Jesus now comes and lives and dines with you. The Holy Spirit now comes in. You're a new person, a new creation, the Bible says. You're going to start thinking different. You're going to start talking different. You used to go to places and you say, man, I can't go there anymore. I'm saved. But you need discipleship. Without discipleship, you won't make it. You got to get discipled. Our class is here. It's called Holy Warriors. Holy Warriors 1. And you get discipled. What does that mean? You become a student of God. See, to become a student, you can't live it out. You got to become a student. So right when we pray, hang out for about a minute or so. We're going to exchange a phone number with you and get you connected to discipleship. Get you connected to your next step. Every head bow, every eyes close. Maybe you're at your seat. Say it with us. You're online. Say it with us. You're online. You go to igotsaved.com after this. You're online. Go to igotsaved.com. Every head bow, every eyes close. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. From this day forward, I am a follower. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fill me. Jesus, set me free of all my addictions, all my bad habits. Set me free and help me, God, to save my family. Help me, God, to save my friends. I will tell everybody about you and what you did in my life. In Jesus' name. I am saved. Amen. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. All these people here in the front, hang out for a couple of minutes. We want to pray with you, exchange that phone number, get you connected to Holy Warriors, baptism. You guys, Wednesday night service, 7 o'clock. 
Friday, Good Friday service at 7. The Passion Experience starts at 6. It's going to be great Friday. Sunday, 6 a.m., sunrise, 9, 11, and 1 y media, 1.30. Un servicio en español at 1.30. We love you guys. If God is for you, who could come against you? If you need prayer, come on up.